always toss to be able to snap the coil. Uh, yep. So it seems like a pretty straightforward bottom game. side, though. Seems like they're doing a pretty good job at trying to put Low back in the bottom side of the net worth because Ponlo is just sending him with the click. This is like... I swear what Podlo is doing is what every lion does in my pubs and he's so infuriating when I'm playing carry. And you just have a lion who just like mana drains you and just clicks you in the entire lane. You're like, please leave me alone, you little cretin. I mean, if you have no stuns, he's going to be allowed to do it, right? Like, what's absolutely stopping you is finally, it is actually a kill going the other way. They got rid of the sentry ward. They Somewhere used that. Else on the map. They might have potentially seen him place that observer ward down in the, uh, the river as well, where they still have their own vision. It's actually a kill onto Ponlo this time. Was that a solo kill coming through from Tianming? It kind of felt like it. I think it was like there was a little bit of a skirmish that was happening there, and then uh, Tianming uh, was able to snipe him with a uh, with a shadow poison at the end there. So we'll call it a solo kill for now. That's a five on a four. Yeah. Seven twenty-seven damage, all done by Shadow Demon. Very nicely done. Quickly needs to get back to the lane though, not worrying so much about the. Uh, the even. It feels like Bark is coming out. I don't want to say on top, in, in the top lane, but he's definitely doing extremely well. Uh, you know, he's got some really, really good levels. He's got quite a lot of CS. They're putting a lot of damage here onto Erica. The toss up as well. The tree. He's got the one, but doesn't have the Sakuchi. So, Bark, speaking, it shall be manifested. He gets himself a kill onto the Weaver. So, it turns out they did see that Observer Ward that was placed there, but as these EQs <laughs> are going to de ward it well, before the Shadow Demon. Yeah, and an early level 6 on a hero like Shadow Demon, right? Like, just has those impactful ultimates. It's very, very hard to play into. Like, if you are going into a, a team fight where the Shadow Demon is level 6 and nobody else is even close, it's going to be a hard fight. They're going to see what they can do here. FY's making the rotation across the left-hand side. Nice. Beautiful stun there from Ponlo. But I think 7E, unfortunately, is a little bit too far away. And they will get their kill onto the leaner. The slow coming in from the traps is too much for them to deal with. Yeah, you just see how squishy he is. He right that. Oh, Ancients. Are they going to do the work for him? Doesn't look like it. Yeah, FY is just trying to buy enough space here for Bark to get within range, and he does get it done. So ZZQ was going on a little bit of a scouting mission, and unfortunately he pays the price. Um, and FY takes him down. Oh, he's alive. Oh, he's so close to going down. Tianming turns it back around. They get the kill there onto Ponlo as well. So a lot of rotations from Azure Ray, a lot of core heroes in this bottom side of the map, but it's well worth because they keep their Slark alive. Would have died without that uh, that Shadow Dance as well. Just, oh, and again, another kill. FY, just putting in the business right now. DK, he's got plenty of uh, money on top of everything else. Oh, finally get something. That's rough to see. ZZQ hits the hook shot directly into a creep, uh, creep set, but... Ponlo's going to be able to get the kill there with the Finger of Death onto Tian Ming, but now Ori's come in with that Blink Dagger. Laguna Blade goes down onto FY. He's going to try and get himself away, but there's a lot of damage there to go in on towards Azure Ray. They want to try and keep this fight going. Look at the damage that comes in from Ori. There's not that much minus armor, and that DK melted like paper. And same with 7E. He's going to throw the Light Strike Array, and it will be the Plasma Field that gets the kill. Triple kill. They've got a decent amount of stuns, but they just don't have the HP to stand in front. We talked about it at the start, right? The Dragonite really needs to be that meat shield in front, and uh, Bark just says, there's going to be no shield that can hold me because I'm going to sprint past it. Ori gets the two-tap on his EZQ. So, again, Azure Ray are just shrinking this map. They haven't taken the Tier 2 Towers just yet, so there is at least some areas for, you know, Erica to farm, but not even at the Maelstrom just yet. 3,000 behind Bark as well as Ori, almost 1,000 behind Low as well. This is a very big struggle for oh, Team no. Zero. Weaver's ditch. They're surrounding him. How much damage do they have? They have oh, just the right clicks. He was halfway through the animation of the time lapse. What's the defensive move out of Azure for once? Mm, 100%. And we'll see if that's the, uh, the road to recovery that Team Zero will take or if it will just constantly be Azure getting these kills because, as you said, not only is the map getting smaller, the vision is getting smaller as well, and ZZQ, he's going to provide one of the coffers of Bark again. He's got BKB queued up, but does he even need to go BKB? On Ori? Or no, on, on Bark. Bark. Yeah, I think so. Like, what's stopping you if you have it is my thing. It's only the power cogs, basically, and you need to be perfect on ZZQ for that. Yeah, 100%. Oh, they found Ponlo as well, but he's not who they're interested in. Uh, he's FY. Good yeah, if I if I tried to do the uh, the old toss onto onto Bark hit double with the avalanche and be able to get two kills for one, but 
it's you can clock. run at. If you're not making things happen, <gasps> then they're just going to be able to run at you as 70. Maybe getting picked off here, or just saving with the flame cloak. Oh Maybe. yeah, gets over the uh, the ridge there. But now Ori with this amplified damage room wants to try and get the damage done. Gets it in, and they go into the backside here with low as well. He's going to go in towards the shadow he dance. He's now able to get away. So the pounce latches on to the weaver. How much damage can they do to the slark? Do they have enough to take down this pesky hero? They still have the disruption here from Tian Ming. Ori comes into the backside once again, assassinates onto ZZQ. They've got so much damage here against Team Zero. Godlike for Bark, Ori with the double kill. And this is looking like it's done, Matt. Yeah, they're going to call it. It is GG's hit. 19 minutes for Azure against Team Zero. I thought this was going to be far closer, especially in this game number one. But, I mean, Azure. Pedal to the metal, baby. Oh, yeah. Like, it is... It's pretty hard to uh, to go against Azure. I wasn't sure if they were going to... Positive outcome this time. Yeah, I just want to see the fortunate. Doing a, a lot of good work in this lane, though. Remember what I was mentioning, though, about, like, uh, you're not going to have a decent matchup against the Faceless Boy, but you are against the... Hold on. Beyond is actually the one getting run at here, just trying oh, to get so a word. Yeah. yeah. But, uh, yeah, nice. basically, if... As long as the lane's in a good spot, and Lo has completely healthy HP, and you have no mana on the Razor... Yeah. Which is good. So, now the rest of the lane's going. It feels like there is quite a lot of... The CS go in the way of Azure. They are completely winning out on a lot of these lanes. They're not dominating, um, especially now with Beyond getting the kill there on Tian Ming. Lowe's is going to come in and get that final right click to be able to take down the Razor in response. Ponlo, oh, did that just time out when he tried to throw the true grab? Because that would have been a nice little bit of gold there going towards Ponlo, getting himself uh, closer and closer to those booties. Doesn't get it. Oh, and that is a straight-up solo kill there from Ori. Pre-level 6? He had a shield rune, did he not? All right. Bark doing faith beyond things. This guy is an absolute menace when it comes to being in the offlane. Is he just going to straight-up solo kill his Q? Disruption's going to go out. He does have a TP. Bark wants to try and find him. The auto attacks. He gets the hit there with the Tidebringer as well. GGQ trying to break some ankles. He's getting close. The tide bring up five seconds. Is he going to hit him with the torrent? Oh, he got blocked by his own illusions. Oh, this is a key. Oh, 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 oh. He did it. Oh, no, the Korea. No, it's easy Q. It was such a cute play. Such a cute play. They have some insanely strong heroes. Bark is a menace. They can't kick him out of this bottom lane. He might even just kick out Erica. Um, Lowe's is going to be able to sit towards the top side, and then Ori can do whatever he wants. They're going to try and kick out Bark here by going in directly from the Slark. Does not have that level 6. Tian Ming, they're going to come in. The disruption goes forward. The boat goes down as well. Beautiful stun, and it's just the kills they needed for Azure Ray. And I said the game felt over. That was a minute ago, and now the game feels even more over. Um... It's just too hard to kill these, like, Conkers and Centaurs and Timbersaurs and Primal Beasts and Mars. Ooh, he's going to try it. Ooh, okay. They don't have the Dark Pack to try and play around with here, neither with the Shadow Dance. The damage they need, the auto attack. Oh, my God, FY. He waited until he saw the Pounce, and then he used the Telekinesis. Ah. That is some Chef Kiss shit right there. That is, that is why... You see FY Ruby here bricked up. You just you just feel it. I heard the pulverize. Okay, they get the kill there on Ori, but they do give away the pulverize. 7E is going to get pulled back in. He's going to lose his life. So a little bit of a uh, reprieve for the side of Team Zero, but instantly gets taken. Oh, no. Oh, that's actually Pog. For the Team Zero fans. They get the kill on the Tian Ming, but Ori comes in with the Amplified Damage Rune. But it's a lot of damage being stolen here by Beyond. Pulverize will go out here from FI. A lot of damage comes in with the Sonic Wave. Hits on a 2 from Ori, and that Amplified Damage Rune does so much work already. But Beyond, he's got so much damage stolen low. Doesn't have any of this damage left, and now with it all going away from that Static Link, they can get the Bashes going, they can get the Auto Attacks, and Beyond goes down low. We'll get the Killing Spree. And it felt like Azure were just taunting them at that moment. And they are, again, just super fun. He does have some good matchups into, you know, the Faces Void as well as the uh, the Conquer. Ponlo. Oh, unfortunate. X marks a boat combination. 
It's a lot of damage. Instant smoke up now from Azure Ray. Where do they want to go? Top side. They have found out low. They know that he's here, I believe. Well, looks like it wasn't going to be enough. The Chronosphere is going to go down on Erica. That is not enough damage by any stretch of the imagination. They're going to try and get the TP away, and they will be able to get it. So they're just going to claim ZZQ on the backside. Just wasn't quite close enough there. Low kind of jumped the gun a little bit there on the Void. They know that this is happening. Ponlo's so close to Blink, man. They want to try and fight. How close is Roshan? Oh, the disruption. It's just at such an awkward time there from ZZQ. If they just run in, they might have been able to get themselves to kill on the Roche, maybe. But this is where they're going to try and fight. With the BKB, Beyond goes up into the high ground, gets a static link going. A beautiful pushback there by Ori. A lot of damage goes through onto Team Zero. They're getting extremely low here on the Razor. He has to try and get away from the Faceless Void. The TP out is going to be enough. Just in time. Low, though. Has to time walk away. Bark. They don't have the damage to take down the Conqueror. And now it's just 70 versus the world. A lot of damage comes back from the Blade Melon. Low. He time walked directly in front of the Primal Beast. But they don't have the damage to take him down. Azure Ray. Sit here and wait. See what the rest of this game is going to look like. Oh, they found out beyond. Sorry, lads. I was looking at some memes. Getting myself a little distracted here. ADHD brain. Ponlo. Been found out. And that's the solar plasma field from f -Wipe. So they get themselves to kill there onto beyond low. They cancel some blink dagger. 70. Won't go the entire way. Low. Jumps up to the high ground. Everybody else has hit the eject button. So low. you got to be careful here, buddy. He's ran completely out of mana. So this Diffuser Blade doing a lot of work. But with the Shadow Dance already being utilized, it is so hard for them to try and fight now. Low is going to go in. Massive Chronosphere. Hits onto the Shadow Demon. Hits onto the Primal Beast as well. And with that Shadow Dance being utilized earlier on, the Slark cannot go in and fight. So wasn't that was some of the biggest balls I've seen. I thought maybe he might like commit Sonic Wave for it, but I don't even think they got that tormented like half HP. All right. Oh, sh So the Slark got the free kill there. Aghanim set the picked up now from Erica as well. So a little bit more tanky on the Slark. So he gets the free kill there on the TR Ming. So even though Azurea are well ahead, they are not closing this game out just yet. Sitting directly on top of a ward as well. Erica is going to go forward. FY, four staff already being used. Or he has another one at the ready once this uh, Slark gets on top of the target. But the Sonic Wave misses its mark. Ori goes away. They want to try and get the damage here out onto ZZQ. Bark comes in with the water park as well. So they'll take down the Shadow Demon. Low gets away from the Razor but uses the nine second BKB. And Azure. The game is definitely in a precarious spot right now. And Bark, he wants to get this fight rolling. He walks forward with his rest. He picked up Bloodstone as well. Ori goes in towards the back line, but that's an awkward blink. Got a lot of his HP to try and get through. They get rid of ZZQ. Ori, though, doesn't survive long enough for the Chronosphere to save it, but it's the Chronosphere that does the work to get the two cores stuck inside of it. And Low wants to go to Bash City. 7 e uh, 7 e you've only really got Ponlo around you. There's a lot of damage that's going to be thrown your way. At least he will take FY with him. 7 e has a few of these spells coming back off cooldown. He has the Blade Mail as well, but the X marks the spot is good enough. And Bark will convert that kill as well. That was a really interesting fight. Bark just went balls in, popped the Bloodstone, said Erica, let's see how you maneuver your way out of this one. We're getting into us. Oh. How did you find him out? It was low there as well. Yeah, Chronosphere committed. Big kill on the 7 8. And Ori was actually able to catch up Pondo on the top side of the map as well. Amplify damage rune does a lot of work against this tiny. So Azure Ray just, just getting the picks across the map. They are slowly but surely closing this map down. Low. Goes in. 
He's kind of trolling Ponlo. Oh, that is like max range from Bark. I was like, this doesn't hit. But Bark's a gangster. And he knows what his hero does. And it's another kill on Ponlo who unfortunately really hasn't had a performance. Um, that he would be happy with in this yep. game. Probably even tickled the high ground. X marks the spot. You'll set that up into the air here from 7. He gets away from the combination. Toss back in here on a Tian Ming. Gets brought in by the Pulverizer as well. Low goes in. Wants to try and look for a Chronosphere angle. Doesn't want to try and commit it onto the Slark. Or he will go up to the high ground. BKB has been used and they are baiting out so much here from Team Zero. And you can just see that Low was really trying to find the perfect Chronosphere there. Wants to try and make sure that he connects with the Slark as well as EZQ. But full Lanarax will go the way of Azure Ray. Potentially two if they want it. They are very disconnected from ZZQ here. If Lowe saw that, he could have just Chronosphered out onto Erika. Quite easily could have been a big team fight for them. The Slark's going to go in. Does a lot of damage here to Bark as well. They're going to put him on the leash. How much damage can the Razor steal? That's the real question here. Low comes in. Deals a lot of damage back towards 7A. He's just chain bashing him. But the Depth Shroud is so strong. Now they're going in towards the side. Oh no, ZZQ. He's just too far away. He doesn't get the disruption onto the Slark. And Low takes him down. Beyond is the next one to fall. And Azure Ray... They have sealed the deal with a 2 and 0. They have absolutely spanked Team Zero in this series. Game number 2 was much, much closer. But this was a very, very straightforward 2 and 0 for Azure Ray. So they will move forward into the final.